Hello. In this uh, video I'm going to describe the uh, ground plane basically on my VHF communications antenna system on my helicycle N750 Golf and why it's there. I'm the only one that uh, has this and uh, no one seems to understand why it's there so maybe this will help. When I began uh, looking into my antenna performance, the first thing I needed to do was qualify the radio I was using and make sure that it was functioning properly. I'm using an ICOM ICA210 VHF communications radio in my helicopter. It's rated at 8 watts output. So here's the test uh, setup in my shop. I'm using a Bose noise canceling Aviation X uh, helicopter headset and the transceiver is connected to a Bird Model 43 through line watt meter which is feeding a 30 watt 50 ohm uh, termination. Here's the watt meter over here. Here's the terminator here. So this is a perfect load for this radio. And what am I talking about? I'm going to be talking about VSWR in a little bit, which is uh, pronounced VISWAR and stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. It's basically the ratio of how much power is being transmitted to the antenna and how much is being reflected back instead of being transmitted by the antenna, reflected back to the radio. If everything doesn't match, power gets reflected back instead of transmitted. And the closest analogy would be if you had an automobile, let's say a speedboat. Let's say you have a 400 horsepower inboard speedboat and for a propeller you've got a 2 inch propeller on this thing. You fire the engine up to full blast, the propeller is turning around at 6,000 RPM and the boat's just going about 5 miles an hour. The reason is you don't have a good match between the output of the engine and the water. The propeller's too small. On the other hand, if you were trying to turn a six-foot propeller, it would lug the engine down. So the, the load, being the propeller, has to be matched to the engine, the transmitter. That's the best I can do uh, in terms of an analogy. And if it's not a match, then you run into what's called a high v VSWR, and you'll see you'll see this in a minute as we go along. So now I uh, I'm ready to do some testing. Here's the bird watt meter. Here's the element down here that I'm using. It's a 10 watt, 10 to 250 megahertz element, and I'm measuring power in the direction of this arrow. I can turn this around and measure the reflected power going back that way. But in this test I'm measuring the power out of the radio into the load over here. And you can see uh, we're using a 10 watt element so we'll use the bottom scale here. You can see the needles pegged so I'm actually putting out about 12 watts into this perfect load out of an 8 watt radio. So, so far so good. The next question is, is it all on the right frequency or do I have a bunch of spurious emissions somewhere that I don't know about? This is a spectrum analyzer display showing an unmodulated carrier. I'm just holding, keying the radio down, not talking into it. The peak of the carrier is way up here and the noise is down below and it's down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 60, 75 dB below the carrier. To give you some idea of what that means, if there was a signal that was 60 dB below the carrier, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, say there was something sticking up here, this signal is one millionth of this signal. One millionth. So you can see nothing down here. That means that this signal is extremely clean. There is just nothing to be seen. Perfect. And I'm looking over a 25 megahertz span uh, in this test. So I'm looking across the whole aviation band. So there's, there's nothing to be seen there at all. Taking a little bit closer look, uh, 
I'm now looking at a 100 kilohertz band instead of looking at the entire aviation band and down here you can see that there are two little spurs on either side of the carrier and they're offset 73 it's down 73.4 dB from the carrier offset by 26 kilohertz so that tells me that this unit is using a switching power supply and that the power supply uh, switching oscillator is running at 26 kilohertz. But again, uh, those spurs are down 73 uh, dB below the carrier. If they were down 60 dB, that would mean that the energy in those little spurs is one one millionth of the overall signal, and they're down another 13 dB below that number one. Number two, 26 kilohertz is outside of the pass band of the receiver, so it won't even receive it. Number three, even if it did, you can't hear it because your hearing doesn't go up there. So it's basically not there. For all practical purposes, this is a perfect signal. The only other question is, is it really on the right frequency? So here we are, I've set the transmitter to 125 megahertz and you can see it's actually transmitting on 124.999964 so it's 36 hertz low. That's extremely good. Uh, it could be off a lot more than that and still uh, meet all the FCC and FAA specs as well as the manufacturer specs. So now I know this transmitter is clean as a whistle, it's accurate in terms of frequency and I can use it to do some testing. Now my helicopter is a group one and for some reason the little tab that they welded on the frame uh, to put your antenna is grossly undersized. I don't know what BJ uh, thought you were going to hook on there but uh, the antenna I'm using is a uh, C121. It's a commercial antenna. I forgot what the company's name is that made it. Uh, but it's made for uh, fixed-wing aircraft to mount on the belly of the airplane onto sheet metal. And uh, it's a quarter-wave sloped antenna. So I did some testing with it, just stuck on here, knowing full well I'm going to have to cut this off and put a much bigger mount on. But uh, I have to start somewhere. So I did uh, test, just screwed on here, uh, in, the, in the general area where it will eventually end up. Now since I do this sort of thing for a living, I knew that was going to be pretty awful, and that was confirmed by the test results that I'll show you in a minute. What it really needs is a ground plane. This antenna is called a, mono, uh, a monopole, a quarter wave monopole. It's a family of antennas. It's very common. Uh, good examples are the little stainless steel whip antennas that you'll see on a police car, for example. You'll see them mounted on a trunk lid and up on the roof. Uh, bigger examples would be AM radio station towers. Those are all quarter wave monopoles. The part you don't see is the other half of this antenna, which is the reflective surface that it has to be mounted on to work properly. And on a, a police car, that would be the trunk lid or the top of the car. In the case of an AM radio station, there are radials running out for a quarter wavelength in all directions that are buried in the ground, and that's called a counterpoise. Without that, the antenna does not work right, and that's something that most helicycle guys just don't understand. I've tried my best with my uh, write-up on my website, but uh, as far as I know, nobody else has uh, put a ground plane on their antenna. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So I knew I needed something based on the test results I'll show you in a second. So to make life easy, I flipped everything upside down because the antenna doesn't care whether it's on the bottom or the top of the frame. The frame looks the same to the antenna either way. So to make my life easy, I put everything up on top, let gravity help me out. And uh, I happen to have this piece of sheet metal. So I, I put the antenna in the middle of that, drilled a, a hole for a mount, another one for the antenna uh, the BNC connector to stick through. 
and I stuck a couple uh, radials on there, these four that you see that I had uh, from another antenna project, just to see how that would work, and I took another set of test data. What you see here in red is the test data with no ground plane, and in blue is the test data with what you saw uh, in that last picture with that big plate and the four radials sticking out. Now the antenna manufacturer will tell you that the VSWR, or VISWAR, has to be below 2.5 to 1 or this antenna is not functioning properly. Here's 2.5 to 1, so everything has to be below that line across the whole aviation band. You can see that with that big ground plane, with that plate and the radials, I met that requirement. Without, this is your typical helicycle flying around today, worst case, that 5 to 1 visoir is a total train wreck. And I'll explain a little more about that later, but it's just not good. Believe me, trust me. The next thing I did is I experimented with different length radials just to see what would happen. And you can see that they had quite an effect depending how many and how long and what they were doing. So that just gave me an idea of what I was up against and how sensitive that antenna was to the counterpoise. So the next step was to actually come up with something practical. Obviously that big plate isn't going to work. So I got looking at the antenna and I thought, you know, it's sloped. I'll bet you that it's more sensitive to the ground plane in the direction of the slope. Incidentally, uh, theory says that the ground plane has to extend out a quarter wave in all directions. So these antennas are about 21 inches long. So in theory, I would need a ground plane that at a minimum was a circle 21 inches uh, radius radiating out from the center. But that would be impractical. So I thought, well, let's try, uh, you know, I'll do what's practical. I'll go from the antenna back in the direction of the slope till I run into the, uh, the hanger for the, uh, the bearings for the tail rotor drive back there. And let's see what that does. The results were pretty darn good. Again, no ground plane is in red, and that ground plane, that mesh, is in green. And again, I'm well below that 2.5 to 1 VSWR all the way across the band. So that that's acceptable. That's working pretty darn good. And as a matter of fact, it's just about perfect at 125 and 126 megahertz. And at the extreme band edges, uh, it, it's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty darn good. The other encouraging thing is it's rolling off pretty much equally in either direction, which tells me that antenna is tuned for the middle of the band and it's operating uh, pretty well. That's just a good indication, the fact that the center of the band is the best and uh, it's pretty much equal on either side at the band edges. So that's, that's all very encouraging. However, I don't think that was practical. It wasn't very aesthetic either. And uh, so I went back to the books, double-checked uh, the theory, which says that that counterpoise doesn't really have to be a solid plate. In fact, it can be a grid. And so that, that last mesh was a grid with about you know, a quarter inch spacing. But theory says that the spacing between grid elements could be as much as a tenth of a wavelength. Now these antennas, again, they're quarter wave and they're about 21 inches long. So if we round that off to 20 for a quarter, that would mean a wavelength is about 80 inches. A tenth of that would be eight inches. So in theory, I could get by with an eighth inch grid spacing. Another trip to Home Depot, and I came back with a sheet of this stuff, which is six inch grid spacing. Made myself another one, slapped it on there, and took some more readings. And if you're wondering uh, what happened here,
this particular blade hanger was so out of whack when we uh, got to modifying this group one frame to accept a turbine engine we had to torch that off and make a new one so that's why that's missing at that point so here we are this is the final results again red is no ground plane and blue is that six inch welded steel mesh ground plane that I ended up with and again well below 2.5 to 1 VSWR across the whole band so that's uh, that's a functional antenna system as opposed to the average helicycle in red which isn't working only no one realizes it because they're happy if they can talk to some guy a mile away now what does this mean in terms of numbers let's take one last look here this is the raw data that I collected on each one of these uh, graphs that I made. Here's the frequency column from 118 to 136. So I would transmit at each, uh, each 1 megahertz interval, measure the forward power and the reflected power. And then you do the math to come up with return loss and VSWR. The better the load, the more power the transmitter is going to put out. So you can see up in here, remember this is rated at 8 watts. It's actually putting out in the middle of the band 10 and a half watts. And when you look at the reflected power, this is power that's, that's going to the antenna and bouncing off instead of being radiated. In all cases, it's less than a watt more like half a watt most of the time three tenths of a watt a tenth of a watt two tenths of a watt you know and I usually hang out at 122.7 122.8 so this is you know in my world this is what I'm interested in I'm putting out over 10 watts and I've got between a tenth and three tenths of a watt reflected power so that antenna system is working very very well if you don't have the ground plane, and worse yet, you've got one of these little round radios that puts out 5 watts on a good day with a tailwind, half of that's probably being reflected. So you're probably putting out 2 watts to my 10. Uh, if you're happy with that, uh, that's great. If you'd like your antenna system to work a little better, uh, you might want to consider the ground plane. Uh, I don't have a picture on this of, the, of the, the frame and the ground plane after they're painted. I should probably stick that on there so I don't turn everybody off. But uh, I had the ground plane uh, powder coated with the frame. Uh, there's a new bracket that was welded on there. The, uh, the ground plane is actually tie wrapped to the frame. The only place where it actually makes contact is, is back where the antenna is. Uh, purposely covered over those areas uh, when they were powder coated so I have bare metal on the uh, on the little support bracket and uh, a tab welded onto the uh, to the ground plane that bolts to that bracket along with the antenna so they're all bare metal to bare metal to bare metal right there in that one spot it's not essential that the ground plane make perfect contact with the frame uh, that's irrelevant it doesn't matter one bit and so that's it I hope that was of some use if you want to uh, read more you can go to my website www.junr.com uh, basically I just pulled a bunch of pictures off of a write-up that I did uh, and it's on my website so you can read the whole thing with a lot more explanation than I just gave you, uh, which has the same graphs, as well as the raw data for each graph. So you can look that over and get a little more, uh, more in-depth uh, explanation of what I just described here. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that, and thanks for watching.